Well, hello, 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 everybody. Uh, it's so good to be here with almost 10,000 new and old friends. And speaking of old friends, I guess you're not that old, uh, it's Santiago. It's been a while, though. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm a professor, Justin Capos at NYU. Um, Santiago Torres, I'm a professor at Purdue. And we're here to talk to you about open source security and how you can get involved. It is not a spectator sport. Um, so every journey starts with a single step. And I'm going to talk about the journey of one of the things that we work together on uh, that I think will be interesting for you all to hear about. So uh, one night at about 2 in the morning, I was thinking about password database compromises. And uh, literally, I kind of like woke myself up with this crazy idea to do Shamir secret sharing and mix things in with hashes in this wild way. And I built this like not very good Python prototype. I had this bright PhD student, and I said, hey, you want to make a better implementation of this? And Santiago said, I may have said sure, I may have said OK. You, you said OK, at least according <laughs> to the slide. OK. So um, anyway, he says OK. And he goes and he builds like a nicer version of this. And uh, you know, I go and I start talking to some people about it. And, and we get this really bright high school student. And uh, this high school student comes in, and there's this system that like Santiago and I have designed that we are the only people in the world who really understand it. We explain it to this high school student. And this high school student says, well, wait a minute, though. Um, you know, doesn't it have this certain mathematical property to it? And you know, Santiago and I, we were like, well, no. You know, we built this thing. We understand it. And then we went away and we thought about it a little while. And the next day, we came back and we told the high school student, um, actually, yeah, you're right. Uh, the system that we designed that we're the experts in, you understand in ways that we don't. And so uh, you know, it can definitely be the case that anybody can have impact. You don't have to be a world-leading expert. You don't have to have a PhD. Even the people who have the PhD are getting the PhD and invent systems can often learn things by interactions with others. So really, the, the key takeaway from this first part is anyone can make a difference. Security isn't something that um, you need to be an uber super expert in. You can build that competency and have a huge positive impact in the world. That brings me to the second part, which is even though it might be a minute difference, these positive actions may have rippling effects. And this takes me back to the beginning of my PhD when I was working on Git under uh, Justin. We were trying to understand how the security properties of Git were laid out. And we found out that you could do a very interesting little attack. You could modify the metadata on, on a repository and trick an installer such as pip into installing the wrong version of a package. An interesting part of this was that you could even trick it to verify GPG and pass without compromising the developer keys or anything along those lines. Ever since we, well, back then we worked with, uh, with the Git people, and we introduced some mechanisms to increase the security of Git tag metadata and signing. If you want to read more about it, the paper uh, we wrote back in 2016 is what set up to the Intoto project. We started asking ourselves, if this can happen to Git, could this happen to the rest of the software supply chain? And I think we spent, uh, I don't know how many months, looking at 20 years of software supply chain compromises and realizing that, well, this could be something that, that can be done by, say, an APT that has Bear or Panda at the end of their name. Uh, I mean, a, a nation state actor. So we built in Toto, which is a framework to provide cryptographic traceability and verification for all su software supply chain actions. Said it differently, if you are uh, using Intoto, you can sign the result of a, of a vulnerability scan using a tool like Trivi to make sure that it's actually attached to the binary that you're releasing. If you're building on a CI platform and you're using something like Salsa, then you can cryptographically sign and ensure that the source code that you're using is the source code that was used to build and release the artifact. Hell, you can even put in Toto to a test and ensure that the software bill of materials that you're, uh, you're producing is actually the one that's talking about the software that you're releasing and providing to your customers. 
So Intoto then became this framework to really protect against very large scale uh, software supply chain attacks. Again, we're talking about nation state, nation state attackers to provide a cryptographically verifiable paper trail, which eventually became uh, something that could have protected against the most sophisticated cyber attack from, again, an APT that has a name that ends with bear and a targeted uh, large company such as SolarWinds. As a matter of fact, SolarWinds themselves decided to implement in total in, to their framework to protect against, uh, again, the most sophisticated cyber uh, attack in history. And they contributed back their, their work into the change project. As a matter of fact, this same design is the design that you're looking at when you uh, see GitHub, uh, GitHub attestations for artifacts. So stepping back a little bit, I was talking about ripple effects. This all started in an office in Brooklyn uh, yep. eight years ago. We were chatting about, well, wouldn't it be nice to have the same properties of another CNTF project called Tough into Git? And we found this surprising result. You can carry out a very subtle attack that eventually became the Intoto project. We released the Intoto project in 2017. I think it was six developers, including the two of us, building this tool, trying to understand how the software supply chain attacks come to be. And we eventually joined a bigger team, the CNCF. By 2019, we were talking about, I think, 12 developers from different organizations trying to build a framework that would eventually <laughs> or could have protected against an attack such as SolarWinds in 2020. In 2021, uh, people like uh, people in SolarWinds, people like Trevor Rosson, designed a system that can protect against future compromises like this. Organizations such as Tecton and the uh, CDF start integrating the solutions. In 2022, we become an incubated project. We're thinking about more than, I think, 24 contributors in, in the project from organizations and startups. Uh, I, I want to name a couple. Kusari was doing a fantastic job using Intoto attestations in the WAC project. Uh, TestifySec was also developing tools to, uh, to improve the quality of life of this project. And, but we're looking at 2024, and you have a lot of deployments, a lot of companies that are using Intoto to protect thousands of products with millions of users in total. In, in fact, multiple of the keynotes before this already mentioned this as well, so <laughs> I think they we didn't did. even have to promote it. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to give a couple of highlights, though. If you're using NPM, you can actually flip a switch and with a combination of six door and the NPM CLI, you can provide in total attestations for provenance using Salsa. This is fantastic work by the folks at GitHub and, uh, and NPM. I think Zach Steindler was the one that was leading this effort. It was a, lot, a big lift. And I couldn't go without talking about uh, our friend, Trishan Kupusami, who made the first, the first large scale integration of this tool. This was uh, the Datadog agent integration that can authenticate every single line of Python code in the Datadog offices all the way to the delivery to their customers using hardware tokens. This is what uh, eventually became the first end-to-end -end trustless build system, trustless CI. So I guess the takeaway of all of this is never under underestimate yourselves. We were two people in an office trying to think about what were the consequences of signing Git tags and then we started exploring a little bit about the relationship between this and the software supply chain. Is this bigger than working with the folks at Kit and trying to improve their security? Are we actually looking at a bigger problem? And well, that's what happened. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and the last uh, bit that we want to talk about is, in some ways, the most important, how you all get involved, how you can make this not just be a spectator sport. And you know, the, the first message is you need to show up. That, that's really the first and the most important step. And there's lots of ways to do this. So um, certainly uh, the financial people at NYU and Purdue would like you to take option one, which I'm going to discuss here, which is to come and, and pay them uh, tuition so that you can take classes and get hands-on experience. Um, and we do a lot in our classes to really try to give back to the community. Uh, so uh, last year, uh, I had a bunch of security pals where um, we had 110 students from my class 
that did security assessments for 28 different CNCF projects. And those are now all up and available uh, to the CNCF. So if you're trying to understand what are the security implications of different projects, um, you know, what, how should I reason about this? You know, so your group doesn't have to kind of threat model it from scratch. You can go look at others that have done assessments of this. And this year, uh, what we're doing instead is we're going and having about 110 students again this year that are building uh, different applications using the Linux Foundation Open Quantum Safe uh, libraries that were recently released. And so, in some sense, we're kind of smoke testing these and trying to see our, you know, reasonable entry level uh, developers able to step in and use these and be able to build them into semi-realistic uh, applications. And for years, we've been contributing to a bunch of different open source projects. Uh, one that uh, you did a lot of when you were my PhD student, and you know, I, I have continued to push. Um, you know, after then is reproducible builds, which we're both big, big fans of. It's an awesome effort, uh, super fun community. And uh, we've also done a lot of general contributions to open source. You want to talk about any that you do at Purdue? Yeah, Purdue, now we have an open source uh, software thesis option. You can contribute a large uh, feature to open source and graduate from that, which I think is fantastic. I, I encourage every university to take something like that. Yeah, something like this. Absolutely terrific. Um, and what about projects? Well, yeah, this is not only about the total project. This is actually about the CNCF and the team at the CNCF and all of the different teams within projects in the CNCF. Uh, what I have here is the landscape of only security-related projects. You can join, really, any one of them. Uh, at the in total project, for example, we take Google Summer of Code students. We take contributions from people that don't necessarily need to have security expertise, but they want to get their feet wet with the security world. It really is not looking for professional pen testers. We're trying to build a community where everybody can learn and everybody can contribute back to secure the software supply chain and software open source in general. Summing out a little bit, these are all of the CNCF projects as of, I think, a couple of days ago. And all of these have security needs. If you think that a project is not fulfilling the security needs of, a, of their users, I encourage you to engage with them and work with them and try to contribute to a better open source software project. As a matter of fact, I think the first CVE that we ever had was on Intoto, uh, sorry, the first CVE on Intoto that we ever had was somebody was trying to run the demo and they didn't realize that what they had found was a vulnerability. They reached out to us and they were like, hey, what's happening here? Is this, is this meant to happen? And well, it wasn't meant to happen, but now we have a better, more secure in total implementation. And, and we have a CV on our slides now. <laughs> we'll fix that one later. OK, and um, so the, the final way to contribute uh, that I highly, highly recommend is to find a group that specializes in security. And um, there's another Linux Foundation organization called the OpenSSF which does absolutely fantastic things. We both participate in open SSF and created you know, different open SSF projects and also, of course, CNCF projects as well. Um, and, and so the two groups have a lot of overlap, but this is um, a group that's very focused on software supply chain security. It tends to be a smaller, more tightly knit group of experts. If I give a keynote talk at an open SSF event, then I couldn't crowd surf afterwards. That's not an option. <laughs> it's a little smaller of an event. Um, but you get to meet like the real experts who built a lot of the most important technologies and things like that that are around today. And there's lots of great projects that I'm sure you've heard over and over and over again during this conference uh, that are listed here, and many, many, many more. Um, and CNCF themselves has an awesome group, Tag Security. So we've both done a lot of work that's very involved with that. I have my Tag Security hoodie on. I am a tech lead for Tag Security. Um, and there are weekly meetings uh, in the Americas time zone for, uh, on, on Wednesdays that uh, I would encourage anyone who's in this general time zone to join. And there also are biweekly meetings for people in Europe and Asia. And there's tons and tons of great efforts. So one of the things that I lead uh, there is the security assessment effort. This is where we look at projects and try to do, uh, give them an idea of you know, the security limitations and issues like that. Um, all that great work that Santiago talked about doing before that he had done 
with software supply chain compromises got donated uh, to the uh, tag security and it continues to be maintained. And we now have a new thing, the software supply chain best practices that just came out a few days ago. So I encourage you to scan the QR code and come by the project pavilion. Uh, we are 9B, or if not, then someone at 9B will tell you where we actually are. So um, anyway, the takeaway is join us. We're a friendly group. Thank you all so much. Thank you.